Uh, it's good to be here at Rath Place Pierce to say thank you to all of the personnel involved in the search for ill-fated Ill flight MH370. Um, at the moment we have some 550 uh, personnel on this base involved in the search from Australia, from New Zealand, from the United States, from Malaysia, from China, from Japan and from Korea. I want to thank all of the countries involved in this search. I want to acknowledge the extraordinary work of the Malaysian Air Force because the Malaysian Air Force is not just here right now but it's been in the air searching uh, for three weeks now and it really has been an extraordinary effort by the aviators from Malaysia uh, to come down here over the last few days after all the efforts they've put in uh, earlier in this search. It's been tremendous to see the international cooperation here. Um, we have regular uh, military cooperation with the uh, United States, uh, with New Zealand and with Malaysia. Uh, but to see also the cooperation uh, with us uh, from China, from Japan and from Korea is really heartening and it demonstrates that in a humanitarian cause uh, the nations of this region can come together to work uh, for the betterment of humanity, uh, can work to try to resolve this extraordinary mystery uh, can work to try to bring peace and closure uh, to the families of the 239 people on board that ill-fated aircraft. So it, it is an honour for me to be here to uh, be able to say thank you to the extraordinary men and women who are uh, involved in this search. It's also an honour for me to be here with uh, uh, Air Chief Marshal retired Angus Houston uh, who will be helping to coordinate uh, all of our activities uh, particularly as the search continues to ramp up uh, in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, it's good to be here with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Transport uh, Warren Truss and also with uh, the Minister for Defence Senator David Johnson uh, because all of their agencies are working together to try to get the best possible outcome. We've got the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Australian Maritime Safety Authority, uh, we've got the uh, uh, various Air Investigation Bureau, uh, as well as uh, Naval personnel, uh, Air Force personnel uh, and Army personnel here in Australia. So it's good to be here to salute the professionalism of all the personnel involved uh, and to honour the work of all the countries involved in this very important search. I'm going to ask uh, each of the other gentlemen here just to say a few words and then I'll take some questions. If we could please uh, confine the questions today uh, to questions about the uh, MH370 search because I'll have an opportunity later today uh, to take questions on other subjects. Angus. Thanks Prime Minister. I'm delighted to be appointed to coordinate uh, the uh, efforts uh, on this very important task that uh, we have out in the uh, Southern Ocean. Uh, my job will be to head up the uh, Joint uh, Agency Coordination Centre. Uh, I will be coordinating with my people at the international level, uh, the national level and of course most importantly uh, with the families and the media. And can I say that my heart goes out to the families who've lost uh, people uh, on this terrible disaster that has befallen uh, Malaysian airlines. Uh, I will obviously uh, be focused very much on coordination. I'm not here to run the search. Uh, I'm not here to, uh, to do the detailed uh, operational uh, stuff that is being taken care of very professionally uh, by the uh, Australian Maritime uh, Safety Authority uh, and the Defence Force. Can I say that as a former CDF, I'm immensely impressed with what I've heard today, what I've seen today, uh, and I'm absolutely delighted that we see the nations of the region coming together uh, to do this very complex search and rescue operation. Thank you. Thanks, Angus. Warren? 
Well, I'm pleased again to be back at Pierce just a week after here. I was here last time and I've noticed the, the, the growth in the momentum of the search. Even though this search has now been going for three weeks, more aircraft, more ships are being added each day. And the momentum and the determination of all of those involved to, to, to follow the leads and to hopefully eventually locate the resting place of MH370 uh, is, is, is much appreciated by everyone. Uh, the international effort is particularly notable and, and I commend all of the countries who are involved in making sure that we work constructively together to get the best possible outcome as quickly as possible. Uh, the role of Angus Houston now in coordination and particularly investigation of uh, any of the activity, of any of the uh, debris that comes uh, to shore and also to try and work towards finding the cause of this um, uh, event uh, is, will be particularly important. Thank the West Australian Government for making available its emergency centre to act as a nerve centre uh, for this operation and to, and to help support the activities that are currently occurring at the Australian Maritime Safety Authority in Canberra and also the Australian Transport Safety Bureau who have great skills in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in investigating aircraft incidents and being able to work towards identifying the cause. It's a priority for us to try and recover the black box a recorder of this um, uh, aircraft as soon as possible. Um, it, w it is of course an Australian invention, the ATSB, and our, and, and our safety bureau has a particular uh, skill in being able to interpret that data when it, when it becomes available. So there are lots of challenges ahead, but the key task now is to focus on finding whatever we can uh, so that hopefully the, uh, the location of this aircraft can be properly identified and we can then proceed to the next stage of the investigation. John Owen. Thanks, Prime Minister. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we'll have more than 100 people in the air over this site from all of the nations that you've heard the Prime Minister mention. We'll have just on a thousand sailors in the area looking for debris. Can I pause to pay tribute to RAF Base Pierce, its commanding officer, uh, Dave Turner, who has been able to ramp up the provision of food and accommodation for more than 500 people in support of the, of the uh, air operation. This is a huge task for Australia. It has gone seamlessly. It's a great tribute to the air forces of the various nations that are involved. They're often flying three and four consecutive 12-hour missions. They're committed. They're most brave and courageous. I want to thank them and all those who support them to try and solve this mystery. Lastly, can I thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the media, for the professional way you've gone about the difficult task of conveying information to your various countries. Thank you so much. We're doing our very best. Bear with us. Okay, do we have any questions? Prime Minister, you say that momentum in this search is building. Is there a point, though, that things start to be scaled back? And if there is, where is that? Um, if nothing of substance is found, uh, obviously such a point is eventually reached, but we are well, well short of that point, and I think we owe it to the grieving families of the 239 people on board. Uh, we owe it to the anxio anxious governments uh, of uh, all of the uh, countries who have people on board that aircraft. We owe it in particular to the Malaysians, uh, who are uh, our friends and partners in so many regional ways. Uh, we owe it to all of them to do whatever we reasonably can uh, to get to the bottom of this mystery. Uh, I just want to know, mm -hmm. this time, how confident you are for this new search assignment, this new search area? Uh, look, uh, this is an extraordinarily difficult exercise, an extraordinarily difficult exercise. We are searching a vast area uh, of ocean and uh, we are working on uh, quite limited information. Nevertheless, the best brains in the world uh, are applying themselves to this task. Uh, all of the technological mastery that we have uh, is being applied and brought to bear here. So uh, 
uh, if this mystery is solvable, uh, we will solve it. Uh, but I don't want to underestimate just how difficult it is. Well, yeah. So how do you think is how long will it take to search if nothing can be found? Do you have a set of time? Uh, I, I'm certainly not putting a time limit on it. Uh, I, I think, as I said, we owe it to the families. Uh, we owe it to everyone who travels by air. Uh, we owe it to the governments of the countries who had citizens on that aircraft. Uh, we owe it to the wider world, which has been transfixed by this mystery for three weeks now. We owe it to everyone to do whatever we reasonably can. Uh, and we can keep searching for quite some time to come. And we will keep searching for quite some time to come. And as I said, the intensity of our search and the magnitude of our operations is increasing, not decreasing. Prime Minister, no wreckage has been found. Was your Malaysian counterpart, Prime Minister, not you too hasty in announcing that everyone has died in this, in this incident? Uh, no. Uh, the accumulation of evidence uh, is that uh, the aircraft uh, has been lost and it has been lost uh, somewhere uh, in the south of the Indian Ocean. Uh, that's the uh, absolute overwhelming weight of evidence and I think that uh, Prime Minister Najib Razak was perfectly entitled uh, to come to that conclusion and I think once that conclusion had been arrived at uh, it was his duty to make that conclusion public. Premier, do you have good ideas to narrow the certain area? You know that we're working on the best available intelligence and on all available leads. The Australian Maritime Safety Authority is uh, uh, an organisation uh, which is extremely skilled uh, in this. Uh, we we uh, have one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, search and rescue zones uh, in the world. Uh, for all sorts of reasons, we've had plenty of experience uh, trying to locate um, uh, objects, uh, trying to work out what's happened uh, within our search and rescue zone. Um, we do it all the time. Uh, we're as good as anyone in the world at it. And if any organisation is capable of coming up with an answer, uh, it's the Australian Maritime Safety Authority. What was the morale of the troops that you had breakfast with this morning? Uh, I think morale is high. Um, they're tired, sure, uh, but this is what they're trained for. Uh, this is what they live for. And I think they all feel um, a great weight of responsibility, uh, but also a great sense of professional challenge and purpose as they go about this task. So How closely have you been keeping in touch with the Day -day operations. Um, obviously, as Prime Minister, I've got quite a lot on my plate, uh, particularly uh, as the government uh, intensifies its pre-budget preparations. Nevertheless, uh, I am getting uh, several updates a day on this. Uh, my office is in, uh, I would say, at least hourly uh, contact with the people who are uh, coordinating and managing the search. So, um, without saying that I'm uh, as familiar with every element of it as, say, the Minister for Transport or the Minister for Defence, I'm certainly trying to stay on top of it because right now um, this is uh, a major international incident uh, and Australia has the uh, lead responsibility, if you like, uh, for operations inside our search and rescue zone. Paul? So regarding the coordination centre, can you, um, how many people will be Involved and would they, would they also involve uh, experts from other countries and uh, who will be paying for the cost? Well, at, at the moment, uh, uh, every country is bearing its own costs, and obviously, uh, we here in Australia will bear the costs of running the coordination centre, which will have about 20 staff under the uh, direction of uh, retired Air Chief Marshal Angus Houston. So uh, we're bearing the cost, and, and look, it's, it's a cost that uh, we think it's only reasonable that uh, as the country in whose search and rescue zone uh, the aircraft has come down, it's only reasonable that we should, uh, we should bear this cost. It's an act of international citizenship uh, on Australia's part. 
um, at some point uh, there might need to be a reckoning. There might have to be some kind of tallying, uh, but nevertheless uh, um, we are happy to be as helpful as we can to uh, all of the countries uh, with a stake in this and let's not forget uh, uh, it's not just Malaysia. Uh, there's uh, uh, China obviously which had the uh, largest number of citizens on the aircraft. Uh, then there are the other countries that uh, have a legal involvement in this. Uh, the Americans who uh, built the aircraft, the British who uh, built the engines, the French who supplied the avionics. Uh, so this is an important international operation. Paul? Yes, so, Australia Prime Minister, I'm sure I'm the fine lines have gone into the calculations of where this plane may have gone. Yeah. Do you feel yourself that this is a little beyond the realm of hypothetical? How do you feel about it? Well, um, w w when you are trying to reconstruct what has happened, uh, from limited information, uh, as more information comes to light, uh, as more uh, potential uh, uh, becomes apparent, uh, obviously uh, you refine what you're doing. And we've now had uh, uh, three weeks uh, to think about this. We've now had th three weeks uh, to um, scour all of the uh, bits of evidence that are available and this is the best conclusion that, we've, that we can come up with. Now, un un until we locate some actual wreckage from the aircraft um, and then do the regression analysis that uh, might tell us uh, where the aircraft went into the ocean, um, we'll be uh, operating on, on, on guesstimates. But nevertheless, uh, this is the best we can do. Uh, and I want to stress, we've got uh, the best people in the world uh, doing this work. Uh, we have got extraordinary minds, extraordinary technology uh, involved in trying to come up with the best answers we can. How do you plan to communicate with the families uh, via the uh, new, new centre? Well, I might ask Angus to, uh, to add to that. Um, but, uh, look, I, I've been in... Uh, I've had a number of conversations with Prime Minister uh, Najib Razak of Malaysia. I've had a, president, a, a conversation with President Xi of China. Uh, I've met with the um, families of uh, two of the uh, Australian couples who were uh, on the aircraft. Uh, I have spoken uh, to the family of the two uh, uh, Australian citizens who were based in Beijing. Uh, so I've had uh, some contact of my own with the families and obviously Angus's centre will, will do more in the uh, days and weeks ahead. It's very early days for the, uh, for the centre, but uh, uh, I understand some of the families are likely to come to Australia at the invitation of the, uh, the Prime Minister. Uh, and when that happens, we'll have a, uh, a prime coordination role at that time. But in the meantime, I think it's important for, for me and the people in the centre to ensure that the families are kept fully informed of developments uh, in the ongoing search. Thanks, Prime okay. Minister. Can I ask another one to Air Chief Marshall? Sure. Just, just in terms of the contact that you and your staff have had with those families, what have they conveyed to you about their concerns? I only uh, arrived here in West Australia late last night. Uh, and I'm really still um, reading in and briefing into the, uh, the job. Um, when I know a little bit more, I'll be delighted to come back to you and indeed to the rest of the media um, through the rest of the week. I'll be available to speak to you uh, and discuss some of these uh, questions that you have. Thank All you. Right. Uh, uh, Marshall, where's the centre located? The centre, the, the West Australian Government has very kindly provided facilities uh, in the city of Perth. Uh, I understand uh, it is the, uh, the crisis centre, the West Australian uh, crisis centre, and we will be established there uh, with all the equipment necessary uh, to do the uh, very challenging coordination task that the Prime Minister has given us. I mean, with, with the members, I'm saying related to the crisis found, 
uh, will Australia test it alone or together with other countries? I'm sorry? Uh, whenever something relates to the missing flight is found, yes. mm -hmm. will Australia deal with it alone and, uh, or will it, do it with, uh, test it with other countries? Um, I'll, I'll ask the uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Transport uh, to add to this, but <clears throat> my understanding is that the um, responsibility uh, for the search um, is, uh, is, is fundamentally Australia's, given that it's in our search and rescue zone. Um, and uh, so initially, at least, uh, it would be our responsibility, um, I, I guess, uh, at some point, obviously, um, Malaysia assumes a very important responsibility uh, as the uh, nation that uh, owned the aircraft, but uh, we're not quite at that point yet, and we're talking to the Malaysian government about what we can usefully do to assist them and to cooperate with them uh, once that point is reached. Warren? There is an international convention which most aviating, aviation countries are signatories to called the Chicago Convention, which outlines the procedures that um, occur in circumstances like this. And as the Prime Minister has said, that convention gives to us, as Australia, as the, search, the, the country responsible for the search and rescue zone, a responsibility to uh, take uh, control of, of that, that element of the, uh, of the, of the search. Uh, and also recovery of uh, any items which uh, can be recovered. Uh, Malaysia is the flag carrier, the aircraft flag carrier has responsibility for the investigation. But the, the convention, as the Prime Minister mentioned earlier, gives a large number of other countries a right to be involved in that investigation. Uh, uh, Malaysia takes the lead, it's able to ask others to assist it, obviously, but uh, the, the, the US is the manufacturer of the aircraft, uh, the UK is manufacturer of the engines, uh, France is manufacturer of the avionics, and there may be some other countries that fit that category as well. They have a right to be involved, as do <coughs> all of the countries uh, that have had citizens who have been lost in this accident. So uh, in reality, there'll be a large number of countries that have a right under the convention to be involved in the investigation. And that's, what, that's why the work of Angus Houston in coordinating a lot of, that, a, a lot of that, those activities is so important. OK, look, I might just wrap up uh, by uh, saying that, uh, as many of you would know, uh, in a few days I'll be travelling to North Asia. I'll be in Japan, Korea and China. Um, one of the... Uh, focuses of this visit uh, will be to say thank you uh, to the governments and people of uh, China, uh, Japan and Korea for the assistance which their service personnel have been giving to Australia uh, in this very important effort. Uh, again, I want to stress that uh, it is amazing the good that can be done uh, when countries come together uh, in aid of our common humanity and I am very proud of the way Australian personnel uh, have worked so closely together uh, with personnel from China, from Japan and from Korea in this search and I think it reflects so well on all of the countries involved uh, that the work has been carried out uh, with uh, such heart uh, and with such spirit. Thank you so much. Prime Minister, can you just confirm, are you going to a 5,000 water ahead?